Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Direwolf 20's 1.16 pack, where today we're going to be getting the reactor set up on the colony and uh, working on a tier 6 void miner. Uh, just setting up the nuclear fuel processing, and I'm going to try and do it a little bit tidier. So we've got the final step in the chain, which is the isotopic centrifuge, which is going to make our fissile fuel. It needs the uranium hexafluoride, which comes from hydrofluoric acid, which comes from a dissolution chamber of sulfuric acid and fluoride, and we're just importing fluoride uh, into this guy. We've got this quantum entangleloper, which is set to sulfuric acid. Yeah, putting sulfuric acid on the bottom, and that's just connected to this pipe over here. So hopefully that works. Um, I do see there's power on this, but I don't know if these require power or they can transmit power. Uh, because I think I, I think they can do both. So we'll try and get this set up. So we're making hydrofluoric acid. That is one of the components for uranium hexafluoride. The next is uranium oxide. So we need yellow cake uranium from chemical oxidizer. So somewhere around here, ah, these are all the chemical oxidizers I had set up for processing uranium. Nice. So you got nothing in you. Do any of these other ones have anything? Um, I may not need to set up a bunch of these. So we'll see if any of them have... They don't. They're all empty. Cool. So this guy is going to... I guess we'll get an importer. Picking we don't have any yellow cake uranium. Not yet. So we've made us hydrofluoric acid. Next we need uranium oxide, which was yellow cake uranium. This was an enrichment cha chamber with uranium ingots. So you must have an enriching chamber. For some reason I have seven ultimate enriching factories. Interesting. I think it was when I was trying to craft them and these have got no upgrades in them. That's cool. Uh, I think it was when I was trying to craft them and the recipe wasn't quite right. So if you were here, and you are going to receive uh, from the network uranium ingots, fifteen thousand uranium ingots. Okay, we've we've got a bit, and you need to. Oops. Items import from the back. Cool. Split on. Um, he's, he obviously still needs power. But he's going to eject items out that side. You need to input on that side, and you're going to output gases. Output. Uh, no. No, because you need to go. Whoops, I put this in the wrong place. You need to go into that chemical infuser. I guess we could go around the front. I'm going to say gases. Output out the front. And you are going to receive on your red input. Nice, we got a little bit of uranium hexafluoride. You need to export that out this side. Gases, you need to import on that side. And you're starting to make fissile fuel. Cool, so that's the start of that. And that'll work quite nicely. I think I'm going to go for power underneath. We could go for power... If I put this quantum entangleloper on the bottom... We can get power on the top. We might try that. I think that'll look a little bit tidier. Oh, we've got some machines making noise. That's better. Okay, cool. So you're going to be making for solid fuel. You've stopped receiving uranium ingots. So exporting from the system. Uh, 
Um, did I not make you import items from the bag? Items config. Ah, input. And probably a stack upgrade. And probably just a stack upgrade will be fine. And that'll be plenty of Yikeake Uranium. And this might work better than last time where I had all of these chemical oxidizers uh, making Yikeake Uranium because we were kind of filling up the tubes which was using a lot of our... Wait, where's... Oh, yeah, see like this is going to be filling these pipes first and these seem to take quite a bit uh, to fill them up. But I'll set up the reactor. I'm thinking somewhere around here would be kind of cool. Uh, the reactor and the turbine and I'll make sure I leave enough space because we're probably going to be upgrading our reactor. Um, we're only just losing power at the moment. Down to 230, I think it was like 255, that kind of looks like it's gone up. Oh no, we're definitely losing, definitely losing stuff. I think the oil processing is working pretty good. Something's making a noise. We're processing our uranium. This guy kind of, yeah, I'm not sure about processing with split. Kind of seems like sometimes it's a hold up, but I mean this guy's processing as fast as he can. But if you were splitting, then these guys would get more of this stuff. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Because now we're getting a block up of these ores. I mean, I guess if we do it this way, we're guaranteed to be processing as much as we can at once. And here we go. We have the reactor set up. I think it's good to go. Um, we got the pipes set to extract. Hopefully they're going to extract by themselves. We will test that. We'll be pretty careful. Um, we got our quantum entangler, which if we set it to fissile fuel, and the output for gases. So I'll put out the back. Eject on. There we go. We have fossil fuel. Um, we're going to have to get rid of our nuclear waste. And I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last time. So we've got this quantum entangler. This might be considered a little bit cheaty. Uh, but we are going to. So this is going to be nuclear... Ah, uh, we don't want to do that. We're going to want a couple of these, actually. So this is going to be our nuclear waste. But that, actually, I was thinking this was the stuff that went in um, our radioactive waste barrels. But that's not what we want to do with this, is it? Or is it? But we're probably going to want these guys. And they can only take nuclear waste from the bottom, because we figured that out the hard way. And they output out the front. So we had a couple of these guys. They only accept stuff from below. Uh, which means we're going to have to do a silly, silly pipe thing. Which might look alright if we were to use iron blocks just to cover up the exposed bits. Just so we can't see that there's just dirt under here. It'll, it'll look fancier. So this is going to be a gas. So this needs the ultimate pressurized tube. You're going to be outputting the nuclear waste. And that's going to go into these neutron activators. And they're going to be making polonium. There are a couple of things we can use polonium for. Obviously we can make polonium pellets. And we are going to want a few of them. But we have 124. And like to get this supercharged coil, which we might get into. But I think overall what we're probably going to do is convert this polonium into antimatter. Or maybe some, yeah, because I think we need quite a bit of antimatter to do any antimatter stuff. 
um, and we can make antimatter pellets in a crystallizer and this is used for 16 billion item storage which uh, maybe maybe we're going to be getting quite a bit of stuff a teleportation unit anti-protonic nucleosynthesizer um oh this is the thing that turns like wool into quartz using some antimatter i thought there was something else what the antimatter pellets are used for gravitational so this i think is creative flight for the mecha suit which we might make i'm um, just because we can we don't really need to but yeah i think it'd be cool to check that out and then we've freed up a ring slot so we could use like another ring of odin instead of an angel ring we might try that we might try that plonium getting used in supercritical phase shifter um i think this is a big multi-block i'll have to look into it i haven't made one before so in the meantime we will store polonium maybe we'll convert it into the polonium pellets for now i think that might be the go and we'll work on the other stuff later so polonium can get used to make this in a pressurized reaction chamber which was probably this guy and yes and he just needs to be connected to the network which I set up over here, which possibly isn't the best place. Um, no, we'll move this guy. And now, yes, we've got the wireless stuff here. Uh, that possibly wasn't the best idea. Can we... Can these wireless things go on, like, the back? Oh, well, they can. And it's going to make walking in between a little bit annoying. Maybe underneath, actually. Uh, no, we might want to hide some cables under there. Cool. And that looks okay, as good as it's going to look. So if we had a... exporter. And we'll say... We want fluoride dust. Nice, and that must have already been set up to import items from the top. Cool. And it's going to export out the side. And we'll just do that with an importer. And yes, you're going to get powered from the bottom, which means we're going to have nuclear waste we need to get rid of. Because we're going to have spent nuclear waste, and we can't use that for anything. Ooh, how do we get plutonium? Oh, we could centrifuge the nuclear waste. We can use plutonium to make plutonium pellets, which can make SPS casings, and I think we can use that to make reprocessed fissiles. So we could get more fuel out of that as well, which we might look into. We'll see how we do for uranium. So you're going to be getting the stuff out of these guys. Ooh. Maybe these two want to be... In a slightly different place. So they'll accept that, and then they're going to output out the front. That's okay, and then they can import. This guy can uh, receive gases from the front. We'll output out the side, which is going to be uh, items, but also this nuclear waste. You're going to be nuclear waste, and you're going to receive gases from that side. And then we're going to store all our nuclear waste. I want to have it semi-close by. Just kind of making like a radioactive wasteland. Um, we shouldn't have too much radiation. And uh, the pirate ship apparently sailed away, but he's still there. There was a hotfix that updated mine colonies, so it may have fixed this. And one to Mythic Botany, which you probably want to get the update if you haven't, which is going from 1.60 to 1.61, because you can end up with uh, Invincible Pillagers. Do you, does this person have gold boots on? Why do you... Not good enough, eh? Why do you have gold boots? Okay, so where do we want to store our radioactive waste barrels? I think over here. 
like in the forest. Just causing an ecological disaster. You're going to output gases out the front. Cool. And we'll just keep adding radioactive waste barrels. So we should be able to turn our reactor on now, I think. And if I've got it wrong, we're going to have radiation in the, the colony. Which may or may not kill colonists, so I guess we'll find out. Let's tidy this up a bit. Uh, we'll leave it actually open because we need to make sure this works. So if we turn this guy on... No heated coolant. You're getting some steam. I don't have an output for power on this guy. Alright. Um, that sound has to stop. Oh, that was so loud. Um, might be worth actually having that still there. But just... Just having it quiet would be good. Then I'll remember, I'll know that it's on if I'm over here. That's the only reason I want that. So you might be getting... You are getting some radioactive waste. You are getting some polonium. We are getting steam and we're slowly building up power. We actually need to stop this guy for a second. And yeah, we need to do something with the power. And you should hopefully output power. Nice. Actually, it's still a bit louder. That's okay. And he's slowly going to build up with steam. We currently have plenty of fossil fuel, but we'll see how long that lasts. Cool. So I'm not sure what that injecting factory or those electrolytic separators were for. But nice. Ah, and the injection rate is pretty low on this guy, so let's turn let's turn this up. It's on 0 0.1. Let's go 1. 36,000 RF attack. Here we go. Now we're talking. Um, and I think we could go all the way to the highest one for this guy. And we might even add some more of these, like, control rod things and fuel rods, whatever they were called. And that should increase the output of heated coolant which is going to increase the the output of this guy too so let's adjust your burn rate max burn rate three three i uh, wouldn't recommend doing that if you're not sure that your setup is good so our steam is rising that's what we want to keep an eye on. I don't want to make the same mistake I made last time. Let's turn the burn rate down a bit. Let's go to two. <laughs> because that's... Steam's going down. Because having that high burn rate, maybe we're not extracting enough water into these five trash cans. I might get some more. And just as a reminder, I'm just getting water from the sink, which should be able to provide more than enough to keep this guy full, in theory. Careers are just running around together. And yeah, if the steam gets full, this guy will stop, this guy will fill up with steam and cause a meltdown, so we don't want to do that. Um, if our power gets full, the same thing will also happen. And yeah, we're inputting a lot more than we're using now, so our power should be going up. And what I was working on, which maybe the auto crafting finished. No, we're still doing some induction cells. Oh yeah, he's still. Ah, because we have 2400 infused alloys scheduled. Yeah, I requested six of these ultimate induction cells. And actually, I thought I already had one in this guy, but obviously I didn't because he's only holding a giga 
or a GFE, whereas I'm trying to up that to a TFE. So just one of those cells is going to provide more than what's currently in this guy. Just so we get quite a big, big bit of leeway. What you can do to prevent meltdowns is get a resistive heater. And if we had that, um, the best way to do it probably we'll check him here. What I want to be able to do is output any excess energy. So what we kind of want is excess energy, but we want this to be a priority of negative one. And the input on this guy is a priority of one, so power should go into him first. If this was a priority of two, yes, he would now be getting power. So we set him to priority negative one. And we'll make him something ridiculous. That, the biggest number, 10 things. So if we start producing more power than this, this guy would stop working. But this will just mean that, yeah, if this happens to get full, or if he, if I, when I break him, all the power being generated from all of our reactors will go into this guy and just get turned into heat. Um, and that will just stop, stop a meltdown from happening because this guy will never get filled with power. Because if he does, yeah, he'll stop converting steam to water. So he'll slowly start filling up with steam. Once he's full with steam, this guy's going to fill up with steam. Once this is filled with steam, I think our water gets replaced with steam and it stops cooling him. But he'll keep going and we'll have a meltdown. And that's what happened last time, I think. So as long as that doesn't happen, we should be fine. And it looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Right, I'll have a bit of a tidy up and then I'll get the stuff ready for making our tier 6 void miner in the end. To start getting us the crystals for the next one. And then maybe... It's probably going to be wrapping up point by then. Then next episode, we will be working on uh, increasing the number of void miners we've got. Uh, and getting, yeah, a bunch more ores to try and process. Should be cool. Should be cool. All right, guys, back in a bit. I've got the stuff for setting up this tier 6 void miner. Um, just, I will just set it up with null modifiers for now. Uh, in between episodes, I'll upgrade those to the other things. Uh, didn't do much tidying up here, but we had a bit of a mishap. There's radiation in the area. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem to affect the colonists, which is nice. But um, I think it used to be a thing that you could use the quantum entanglements to teleport away the uh, radioactive waste, but that's not a thing anymore. Um, and we also had an issue where this started the process of melting down. Um, what had happened was this wasn't chunk loaded, and he was no longer filled with water. So I've uh, set the flux points uh, to chunk load and that's that's fixed the problem so yeah that was a close one that was a close one yes yeah, so this guy's running this guy's running we have radiation in the area but it's fine it's fine just don't want to take our <laughs> take our mecha suit off and let's go set up this this miner in the end so we come over to our end miner this guy has been running for a long time I mean, I think he still gets us stuff. But we're going to set up this tier 6 one. And I guess... Oh, I never grabbed an import. Oh, well, we'll, we'll see what it looks like anyway. I think this guy should be pretty big. Present hammer. Hopefully this works. It did not. <laughs> yeah, still a bit funny with the placement. But we can at least see how wide this guy is. Ooh. So he's placed like that. Valid facing player direction. I think it's because I was looking at the top of it where you want to look at the side of him. Cannot break block. Possibly because this area was chunk loaded. And it should be formed um, once we get a IO block 
And I don't think I've got them in my inventory. No, we just need an IO block and a power one. I'll quickly do that. I'll quickly do that. We may as well see what this guy's like. Um, and of course, he needs line of sight down to the down to the void. Right, have the void miner set up in the end. Um, haven't got any of the next tier of crystal yet, and I think it's working. Oh, I think yes, we just got more radiant crystals. So that's the it's the only crystal miner we have. Oh, I've got no experience. Luckily, I've got all of this. Um, the laser beams aren't rendering in the end, so I thought they weren't working, but this is the only crystal miner I have, and yeah, he appears to be, appears to be go going. Oh, I had those in a different place, but then I had to break it and reassemble it. I don't think you can have these outputs or the power on this second layer of frame. It didn't seem to work being there, but then again, maybe it was, and I just couldn't tell. So yeah, I can't seem to claim or load any chunks in the end so there's something going on there but it is working um, this guy this guy is chunk load it's got the chunk load on and we're drawing 50,000 hour for tick and it was significantly less with yeah this is only this is 52 this is only 120 hour for tick so it is working slowly slowly we're getting crystals haven't got any of the next here yet Um, done a tiny bit of tidying up around here. Uh, things seem to be working pretty good, so we'll just leave this guy running. The thing I want to do is, I've got these induction cells, and we're going to chuck them into our our energy storage. So this is going to be a good test of our resistive heater. And look, he's away, because uh, all of our energy is going into this guy, which is exactly what we wanted, because we've just broken our big storage. And we'll chuck these in here. And when we close this up, <laughs> it is now pretty much not full. Energy is going down pretty fast. Ah, oh, may have taken a while just to pick up that this guy was was working. Yeah. Go. Cool. So yeah, this is going to take a very long time to fill up, which is perfect. I'll still leave that resistive heater there. But yeah, so this guy's running. We're making more power than we're using. And uh, yeah, next episode we'll work on uh, getting some more void miners. Might make some other stuff for making... Might get another tier 5 if we can. I did notice also... This guy's still an ore miner. And there are a number of options. Which I didn't see when I was initially programming them. I thought they'd been replaced. Like you could only get these different ore miners. But if we go back, there is the multi miner. And it looks like you can get just a multi miner, which must get some of everything. Which could be kind of cool. Because there's so many different things you could get, I think it would take quite a while to get specific things. So maybe handy if you just want to get some stuff. I mean, I might, might set one up. Uh, if you don't want to have a dedicated botanic miner or a resource miner. Which, yeah, maybe maybe a multi-miner would be cool. And it'll just mean we'll get a bunch of different stuff. And... Yeah, we'll set one of them up. I mean, I'll convert. I'll convert this gemstone or miner. To just a, a multi-miner. So that it should just be like a general stuff miner. So the multi-miner. Multi-miner. And my prediction is this is going to get us all sorts of things like grass blocks, plants, saplings. Um, oh, there we go. We've got like sand, saplings, leaves. Yeah. And that could be handy. Um, just means that we won't need to search out some things. We'll just happen to have them because this guy's making stuff. But yeah, next episode, more miners. Maybe more power. Probably just more miners and more processing. I think we'll be right for power for a little bit. Um, this guy is making... 100,000 hour for tick, so we've pretty much doubled our power production. And we're not using it yet. <laughs> we got a lot of power storage to go. Alright guys, we finally got ourselves a tier 6 crystal miner. And it seems like this guy is 
going to be pretty slow at getting us more crystals. Uh, but we'll leave him. We'll leave him to do his job. And we'll just probably work on building the lower tier ones for our war miners. And yeah, eventually we might get enough crystals, but it does seem very slow. Uh, a very slow way of getting the crystals we want. Which is probably fair. I imagine the higher tier miners are even more ridiculous than the ones we've got currently. Hey, it's been Classic Duff. You've been watching the episode. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.